we're almost finished with chapters with what we're going to discuss in chapter 17. Uh, we have this next section here on some environmental issues, but let me explain that the book talks about acid rain, but it talks much more about acid rain in chapter 22, and so I'm going to postpone my discussion of the chapter 17 part of acid rain until we get to chapter 22. This chapter talks about trop tropical deforestation, but chapter 23 talks a lot more about tropical deforestation, and so I'm going to postpone talking about that until we get to chapter 23. The book talks in chapter 17 about a little bit about global warming, but chapter 19 is entirely concerned with global warming, and so I prefer to postpone even this introductory discussion of global warming until we get to chapter 19. So, in terms of other uh, s some environmental issues, the only one I want to discuss here is one that the book doesn't discuss, which is genetically modified foods and their labeling. So, genetically modified foods are foods that having uh, that that are a process of a that are the outcome of a scientific process of genetic modification. Uh, now. People have been hybridizing foods for millennia, but th haven't had the tools of genetic modification available until fairly recently. And genetically modified foods are controversial for two reasons. The first reason is potential effect on human health. The question is, are genetically modified foods less helpful? less healthful for humans than other foods. And there's a big difference here between the US and Europe. Europeans are pretty skeptical of genetically modified foods. They require that all genetically modified foods, by the way the abbreviation for genetically modified organisms is GMO, so genetically modified organisms, the Europeans require that all GMO food be labeled. In the U.S. does not require that, and so firms that use genetically modified uh, foods are not required in the U.S. to label that, although they could, and some of them do. Of course, if it's not labeled, then consumers who wish to avoid genetically modified foods have no way of knowing whether something they buy contains these or not, unless there is a label on it, a voluntary label on it, saying that the food does not contain genetically modified organisms. In Europe, though, you can be assured that if there's any GMO food in a product, that it, the product is labeled as such. The other controversy con concerning genetically modified foods is their effect on ecosystems, not on human health. So let me give you the example of an herbicide called uh, Roundup. Roundup is an herbicide which kills many types of plants. Scientists have figured out how to engineer genetically modified, let's say, corn although other, they've been able to do this with other crops as well, so that the genetically modified corn is not susceptible to Roundup. You can spray Roundup on the corn and it doesn't kill it. But Roundup kills almost every other kind of plant. So if you plant a cornfield with this genetically modified corn, then you spray Roundup on the field, because the corn is genetically modified in a particular way, the Roundup won't hurt the corn, but it'll kill every other type of plant on the in the field, or at least it'll potentially kill every other type of plant on the field. And this increases crop yields because it means that the crop doesn't have to compete with weed crops. Now, when you spray Roundup on a field, it doesn't stay just on the, for example, corn plants. Uh, there's wind, and there's drift, and the application of the Roundup is often done from an airplane, so it's not very precise. So the Roundup gets other places, falls on other, other, other areas besides where you planted corn. 
and it kills all the vegetation or most of the vegetation that's in these other areas depending of course on how much Roundup actually gets on it. Monarch butterflies are a type of butterfly which are pretty famous because they migrate for hundreds and hundreds of miles. Monarch butterflies depend on a particular kind of, we call them weeds, uh, for their food source. These weeds used to grow near cornfields, but if the farmer plants genetically modified corn and then sprays it with Roundup, that a lot of that, uh, some of that Roundup gets on the quote-unquote weeds that circle the farm, the, 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 the corn crop, and those weeds die, and those weeds are what the runoff butterflies uh, depend on to eat. So there's they're not there's not enough food source for the monarch butterflies anymore, and so monarch butterfly populations fall. So that's the somewhat indirect effect of genetically modified organisms on the environment, and these environmental effects are a separate critique of genetically modified organisms, separate from the effect on human health. So even if, let's say, you agree with the Europeans that genetically modified foods don't pose any threat to human health, you still might oppose the use of genetically modified foods because they have bad ecosystem consequences, environmental consequences. Now, a genetic modification to make the plant not susceptible to Roundup is not the only kind of gen genetic modification, it's just a particularly important kind of genetic modification. But there are other kinds of genetic modifications, and those I haven't talked about here. So in any case, we will treat acid rain, tropical deforestation, and global warming in future chapters.